Last week, I put the top mini PCs head to head, flagship models from two of the best manufacturers, equipped with Intel's Meteor Lake and AMD's Strict Point processors, up to 16 cores, 32 gigabytes of memory, and high end graphics, each priced just shy of a thousand bucks. Today, I'm adding the $600 base model M4 Mac Mini into the mix to see if it can keep up with these powerhouses. Let's find out how Apple's latest compact machine stacks up against the best in the mini PC world. Hey guys, CJ here with Elevated Systems. In case you missed it, Apple dropped the new M4 powered Mac mini last week, and it's now even minier. I checked out some early YouTube reactions from the Apple crowd, and it surprised me to see that many didn't realize this form factor has been around for a while. Intel released the first Nook back in 2012, and now we have dozens of brands producing mini PCs. Today, I've got the flagship models from two reputable manufacturers, the Ryzen AI 9 HX370 powered B-Link Sear 9 and the Intel Core Ultra 9 185H powered Geekcom GT1 Mega. And since these two are seriously overpowered compared to the Mac Mini, I've added a couple of mini PCs closure and spec and price to keep things fair. Spoiler, the Mac mini specs might look underwhelming on paper, but today we're putting it through a gauntlet of tests to see if it punches above its weight in GPU, CPU, and real world workflows. Let's dive in and see where the best value lies. Let's kick things off with a quick unboxing. This won't take long since all these mini PCs give you a similar experience. Pop the top and the PC's right there. The Mac mini is no different, except in one way. While every other mini PC here has an external GAN power supply, the Mac mini has its power supply built in, so all it needs is a power cable, nice and tidy. Once out of the box, you'll notice that while all the mini PCs have a mix of front facing ports, this setup is actually new for the Mac mini with two 10 gigabit USB-C ports and a headphone jack up front. But mm, here's a head scratcher. While all the mini PCs conveniently place the power button up front, Apple decided to lean into the meme and put theirs underneath the Mac mini. I, I can't make that make sense. Around the back, the Mac Mini packs three Thunderbolt 4 ports and an HDMI 2.1 port, port. It can support up to three displays simultaneously, two with up to 6K resolution at 60 Hz over Thunderbolt, plus a third display at up to 5K at 60 Hz over Thunderbolt or 4K at 60 Hz over HDMI. If you're only running two displays, you have even more options. One display up to 5K at 60 Hz over Thunderbolt paired with either an 8K display display at 60 Hertz or 4K display at 240 Hertz over Thunderbolt or HDMI. This setup is pretty comparable to most of the mini PCs here, except the Geekcom GT1 Mega, which supports a fourth display. The base model Mac mini also has gigabit ethernet, which you can upgrade to 10 gigabit for an extra hundred dollars. While all the mini PCs here come with either one or two 2.5 gigabit ethernet ports, which is pretty standard in the mini PC space. And that's it for ports on the Mac mini. Noticeably missing are any USB type A port. So for a Mac mini that says, bring your favorite keyboard and mouse, you'll also need to bring some dongles if you're using wired options like I am. And as usual, there's still no SD card reader, something that most mini PCs here do include. Let's dive into some more specs. The base model Mac mini now comes with 16 gigabytes of memory, 256 gigabytes of storage, Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3. Notably, while the Mac mini storage is socketed, it's not user upgradable unless you happen to know how to do a BGA reballing for a NAND swap. Realistically, any upgrades you want should be done at the time of purchase. Whether those upgrades are worth Apple's ridiculous prices, well, We'll get into that a bit later. 
On the PC side, you get user upgradability across the board. Most of these models even include an open M.2 slot so you can add storage easily and affordably. But the landscape is changing. The Ryzen Strix Point powered models like the B-Link Seer 9 now use soldered LPDDR5 memory. And I have an Intel Lunar Lake mini PC coming in that's also going with on-package memory like the M-Series chips. While Intel claims this is a one-off, I expect both Intel and AMD will fully switch to soldered memory in the near future. Now, setting up the Mac went without a hitch, so let's go straight into the performance test. Starting with raw CPU power in Cinebench 2024 multi-core, the Intel and AMD PCs pull ahead of the Mac mini by 9.8 and 23.5% respectively, but in Geekbench 6 multi-core, the Mac mini takes the lead barely edging out the B-Link Seer 9, the M4's four performance core and six efficiency cores really do deliver here. Where the Mac Mini dominates is in single core performance. In Geekbench 2024 single core, it's miles ahead beating the mini PCs by 48 to 66%. Geekbench 6 single core scores also impressed with the M4 outpacing the x86 processors by 34 to 48%. This makes the M4 the third fastest CPU out there, just behind the M4 Pro and M4 Max. For iGPU compute, the Mac Mini's almost 19% behind AMD's Radeon 890M in OpenCL, but Apple only officially supports Metal on Apple Silicone. When using the Metal test, the Mac Mini scores a chart-topping 57,898. Now, let's see how all these numbers translate into real-world performance, starting with productivity. Using the Underwriter Laboratory's Procyon Productivity Test, which measures multitasking in MS Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and Outlook, we see that the Max Mini single-core speed gives it the lead, scoring the highest in this test. Moving on to creative work, the M4 really shines in Photoshop where the Mac Mini beats the previous best score from Ryzen powered mini PCs by 28%. I said it before that the M1 iMac was the best computer that I'd ever used for Photoshop and Apple Silicon continues to dominate when it comes to 2D photo editing and digital art. When we shift to a more intensive 3D task, like rendering a logo reveal project in After Effects with a multi-core heavy 3D extrude effect, the Mac Mini falls behind a bit, taking 14.5% or 28 seconds longer to render the 4K project than the B-Link Seer 9. However, it outpaces the Geekcom GT1 Mega by a solid 81 seconds. Apple Silicon really flexes its muscles in video editing thanks to the M4's impressive media engine. In the Puget Bench Premiere Pro test, the Mac Mini outperforms the B-Link Seer 9 by 28% and the GT1 by 39%. In the Puget Resolve test, I ran the basic test version because the Minus Forum and Geekcom A8 couldn't complete the standard test. Here, the Mac Mini completely dominates, coming in 69% above the next closest competitor. As a Resolve editor myself, I wanted to see how the Mac Mini could handle one of my actual video projects. I loaded up one of my video timelines and playback was smooth and quick at half resolution, only lagging on heavy GPU effects and the Fusion graphics. This is the same project I used in my last video where the B-Link Seer 9 couldn't render the video due to issues processing a digital glitch GPU effect I used in some of the transition clips. Ultimately, the Mac Mini rendered this project in 23 minutes and 54 seconds, while the Geekcom GT1 Mega took 51 minutes and 23 seconds. Turning back to multi-core CPU performance, in an average of three Blender CPU renders, the Mac Mini does fall short of the 12-core 24-thread HX370 in the B-Link, but still edges out other contenders. However, as GPU rendering has become standard, switching to the integrated GPU rendering shows the Mac Mini excelling. Using the Metal API, it executes nearly three times as many render cycles per second compared to the B-Link, that uses the HIP API. Now, aside from After Effects, the Mac Mini seriously outpaced the competition in every real-world application I tested, and 
at a much lower price than most of these other models. It sounds like a no-brainer, right? Well, as a PC guy, there's one crucial area where the Mac stumbles, gaming. When it comes to raw performance, the Mac Mini actually matches or even beats AMD's flagship Radeon 890M iGPU in the B-Link. In Baldur's Gate 3, the Mac Mini delivers 24% higher average FPS, outpaces the B-Link by 18% in CS2, and just edges out the Intel Arc-powered Geekcom GT1. And in Shadow of the Tomb Raider, it's a dead heat. But there are a ton of caveats here. First, in Baldur Gates 3, I tested at 1080p low with FSR performance mode enabled. While this looked good on the AMT graphics, it was a hot mess on the Mac Mini. Although FSR is an open upscaler, only FSR 1 is available on the Mac, while the AMD system uses FSR 2.2. While the FPS was technically better on the Mac, the visual experience was much worse. On the plus side though, disabling FSR altogether on the Mac still gave me very smooth gameplay, averaging just under 60 FPS. In Tomb Raider, the 1080p low benchmark ran flawlessly, but when I jumped into the game, something was off, as in the dialogue audio. During cutscenes, I could hear the environment, the rain on the windows, and the plane in flight, but not the characters. Their lips moved, but no voices came out. I tried a fix I found on Reddit, but no luck. As for CS2, even though I installed Counter-Strike 2, launching it actually brought up the legacy version of Counter-Strike Global Offensive. It ran well, but it wasn't the game I wanted, so the results are completely invalid. And that right there is the main problem with gaming on a Mac. It's not the hardware, the M4's integrated GPU is just as capable, if not better, than its AMD and Intel counterparts. The issue is compatibility and game selection. There are limited titles available for the Mac, and even some of those have issues like poor upscaling integration. Now, don't get me wrong, there are plenty of games for the Mac. Even if you ignore Apple Arcade, there are thousands of Steam titles and more in the App Store, but most of these are older titles, and the selection of new AAA games is pretty slim. Now, you could expand the Mac's game library with Crossover, which opens up more possibilities, but apart from console or retro emulation, which all of these mini PCs, including the Mac, handle really, really well, none of these should be your primary gaming machine. If a compact, efficient gaming system is your goal, consider a Steam Deck or a ROG Ally. However, to keep things positive, if you're considering a new Mac Mini primarily for productivity, development, or content creation, and you'd like to enjoy some casual gaming on the side, the base model M4 is more than capable. There's a solid selection of games to keep you entertained. In fact, I've personally logged several enjoyable hours playing Baldur's Gate 3 on my M1 Pro MacBook Pro. Now, let's wrap this performance section up with a couple of final metrics. First up, efficiency. Apple's M-series processors have earned a reputation for extraordinary performance per watt, and the M4 keeps that trend going, coming in almost 69% more efficient than the power-hungry Ryzen AI9 HX370. Intel is finally making serious strides in power efficiency too, with the Core Ultra 9 185H beating its AMD equivalent, though it still trails the M4 by about 14.6%. Now, if power efficiency isn't a big deal for your desktop, let's talk about what I think the most important metric for the Mac Mini. Price to performance. At just $600 compared to about a thousand bucks for the B-Link Sear 9 and Geekcom GT1, the Mac Mini's price to performance ratio is more than double that of the x86 systems. Back when I reviewed the M1 Mac Mini, I called it the best value desktop PC, period and the entry-level M4 Mac Mini absolutely keeps that title. Not only does it outperform the best mini PCs on the market in nearly every area, but I couldn't even build a custom PC that matches its performance for the same cost. And that's considering the full $599 price. 
If you've got a student at home or anyone with a .edu email, you can snag the student discount and get it for just $499. Coincidentally, my kids have been buying a whole lot of Macs lately. I'm just saying. <laughs> to wrap this up, I know choosing between a PC and a Mac is way more nuanced than just looking at performance numbers. There's user serviceability, upgradability, and the cost of upgrades. I mean, $200 for an extra 8 gigabytes of memory or another 256 gigabytes of storage that's ridiculous and quickly erodes the Mac Mini's outstanding price to performance, and even the biggest Mac fans agree with that. As it stands, 16 gigabytes of RAM is perfect for the Mac Mini, and I don't see any need to upgrade. In fact, if you have a workflow that would benefit from more RAM, you're probably better off looking at the M4 Pro Mac Mini. However, the 256 gigabytes of storage in the base model might feel tight for some users, and on a side note, I ran everything, video projects, After Effects projects, and even the Steam games from a Samsung T7 external USB drive, and it worked great. There's also the question of ecosystems and operating systems. If you're comfortable with Windows or prefer the ability to install an open source Linux OS, you're likely going to pick a mini PC. On the other hand, users invested in the Apple ecosystem will naturally lean towards the Mac. For me, it's all about picking the right tool for the job. I'll leave you with this. That was my very first computer, and this is my current computer. I use it for entertainment, gaming, engineering, 3D design, and CAD. Every computer I owned in between these was a Windows or Linux PC until about two and a half years ago when I bought a base model Mac Studio to use as my primary production workstation. I use it to edit all my videos, create my thumbnails, and handle all the admin stuff that comes with running a YouTube channel. It's absolutely the best tool for that job. So while I can objectively say that the base model M4 Mac Mini is the absolute best value desktop PC on the market right now, I can't say it's necessarily the one you should buy. That's way more subjective. Hopefully, the comparisons I made in this video and the data I provided help you make an informed decision. If so, be sure to click that like button. There's also several areas I didn't cover in this video, like development and Apple intelligence capabilities, which are shaping up to be pretty cool. I'll be diving deeper into those in my next video, where I put the M4 Mac Mini up against the base model M1 Mac Mini to see if it's maybe time for an upgrade. So make sure you subscribe for that, and I'll see you there.